everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in Unit 2, Differentiation, the Definition and Basic Derivative Rules. Today's topic is 2.7, where we're going to focus on the derivatives of sine of x, cosine of x, e to the x, and the natural log of x. Enjoy today's notes. All right, we're getting into 2.7. We're talking about the derivatives of cosine of x, sine of x, e to the x, and the natural log of x. Last two lessons we spent talking about the power rule and constant rules and sum and difference rules um, and really just dealing with polynomial type functions. But there are other functions that aren't polynomials. Specifically, we've got these uh, listed here that we can still find the derivatives of. Um, let's start with some definitions. So the derivative of cosine of x and sine of x. Um, we're gonna start with both of these simply with uh, some ones I'm gonna ask you to memorize. So these are ones that I'm gonna ask you to memorize to start these off. Eventually we're gonna come back and talk more about these, but these are foundational derivative rules that you just need to know. So the first is that the derivative of cosine of x, that actually equals negative sine of x. If you take that derivative of cosine of x, you get negative sine of x. And interestingly enough, if you take the derivative of sine of x, you get positive cosine of x. Very interesting that these are related to each other, sine and cosine, uh, through derivatives, which is super cool. Um, cool, nice. So let's see uh, how we would use this in a problem. Example, find f prime of x if f of x is equal to two sine of x minus five cosine of x. Well. If we want to take that derivative, the derivative of 2 sine of x uh, is going to be 2 times cosine of x. That's using our constant rule and the fact that the derivative of sine is cosine. And then uh, over here we've got the minus 5 cosine of x. That minus, So we're going to have a minus 5 times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. So this is going to equal 2 cos x plus 5 sine of x because we've got that minus 5 times that minus 7x and that is going to be our derivative function for uh, this first example. Um, I want to take a moment and just sort of show a cool pattern that happens uh, inside of uh, that happens with with these uh, trig derivatives of sine and cosine. Uh, specifically if we start with sine of x Actually, let me back up so we can see this a little bit better. If we start with sine of x, if you take the derivative of sine of x, so I'm going to put the derivative, d dx, if we take that derivative, we get cosine of x, right? That was one of our rules. And as we can see, if we take the derivative of cosine of x, we end up with negative sine of x if we take that derivative. If, what happens if we take the derivative of negative sine of x? If we take that derivative... Well, the derivative of sine of x is, is cosine, and we already have a negative there, so this is going to be negative cosine of x. And then if we take the derivative of negative cosine of x, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative negative sine becomes positive sine of x. So the derivatives of sine and cosine are very interesting because essentially if you keep taking the derivatives, you go in a circle. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, and then the derivative of negative cosine is back to sine again. You can keep going around the circle as many times as you want, and that's sort of like a useful tool to sort of remember your, your derivative rules with respect to sine and cosine for that. Cool, exciting. For this next part, we're going to talk about the derivatives of exponential functions. And we've got some things that we want to recall, so I want to remind you of a couple of things first. So what's the first thing? I want to remind you of what the graph of the natural log of x looks like. So y equals the natural log of x. If you take a look at that function, if you take a look at the graph, the defining feature of this graph is it looks like this. It's got a, hor a vertical asymptote when x is equal to 0 and it goes through the point uh, 1 comma 0. So that's sort of the defining thing. It's got this asymptote that it gets really, really close to as it hits 0, but it actually can't hit 0. Um, and then it goes through the point 1 comma 0. So because of this, the natural log of 1, when 1 is the input, the output is 0, as we can see on that graph. What's the natural log of 0? Well, 
as this graph gets closer to x equals zero, it goes down along that asymptote. It's never gonna hit x equals zero since there's an asymptote there. So because of that, this is undefined. So a natural log of zero is undefined. Now, similarly for these, I wanna talk about the graph of e to the x. y equals e to the x is an exponential function. And the defining features of this graph is this has a horizontal asymptote when y is equal to zero and it goes through the point, uh, through the point zero comma one. Similar to the natural log graph, as this goes towards the left, it's gonna get closer and closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote, but since it's an asymptote, it's never going to, to hit it, it's never going to touch it. Uh, but it goes through point zero comma one. Now a key thing about these two graphs that we have right here is that the natural log and e to the x are inverses of each other. That is a huge thing to know that means they cancel each other out. So ln of x and e to the x are inverses. They cancel each other out in equations. That's super helpful, especially as we get to these uh, here. So what is e to the zero, right? Anything to the zeroth power we know is equal to one. And we can also see when x is zero that the output is one on our e to the x graph. What's e raised to the natural log of a? Well, we said that ln of x and e to the x are inverses. That means that when e and ln are next to each other in a problem, that they're gonna cancel each other out. What are we left with? We're actually left with just that a value. So this is gonna equal a when we do that. Well, then what's the natural log of e to the a? Well, again, that natural log and that e are next to each other. They're gonna cancel each other out and they're gonna leave us with whatever a is in that case. So we've got some cool rules that we can re, uh, recall, which are gonna help us in order to find the derivatives of these exponential functions. We're gonna start with another one to just sort of memorize. So what's the derivative of a to the x? The rule for that, uh, which again, this is another one that I would memorize. This is, uh, these are gonna be ones that they expect you to know on the AP exam quick, by heart, super fast. So maybe if I were you, I'd, I'd make a list of these derivative rules and start studying them. People in my previous classes have made like flashcards, things like that. There are just some derivative rules you need to know cold. Uh, and there's actually gonna be a lot of derivative rules coming over the next chapter and a half. So I would start you know, making those flashcards or start studying those now uh, so that you learn them along the way and don't have to learn them all at once. Um, so what is the derivative of a to the x? It is the natural log of a times a to the x. So Essentially, it's the exact same thing, except we end up multiplying by the natural log of whatever this base is. Um, and so, you know, just a quick example of this, let's say that we've got, uh, we wanna take the derivative of three to the x, that's gonna equal the natural log of three times three to the x, if we do that, uh, using that rule. Okay, well, let's try this with the rule of the derivative of e to the x. So we have this rule for a to the x, and this is in the same form, except instead of just some arbitrary number here like three for that base of a, we have e, which again is a special number, right? Um, if we use the same rule here, this rule says it's going to be the natural log of e times e to the x. But if we remember the natural log of e, those are inverses, those are gonna cancel each other out so the derivative of e to the x is actually just e to the x. Uh, that is a really cool thing. e to the x is a special function that is its own derivative. e to the x is its own derivative. That's cool. A function can be its own derivative. Weird. So if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line of e to the x, it's whatever the x value is uh, when we plug it into that e to the x function. Very cool. Um, all right, so our example here, if f prime of x is equal to f of x, uh, find f prime of x if f of x is equal to two to the x plus three times e to the x. So f prime of x using these rules that are listed right above, the derivative of two to the x is gonna be the natural log of two times two to the x. And then the derivative of three times e to the x, e to the x is the derivative of itself, so that's gonna just be three e to the x. This doesn't change because e to the x, the derivative is still e to the x. That's it. That's the derivative uh, for this function. All right, what about logarithmic functions? 
Another one to memorize here. These are going to be ones to memorize. Uh, the derivative of log base a of x is going to equal 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of a, natural log of whatever that base is. So 1 over x times the natural log of a. Well, how does this work when we make the natural log of x? Well, the, the derivative of the natural log of x, you might remember that ln is defined as log base e. Those are the same thing. These are written in different ways, but they are the same thing. And the natural log is a log base e of x. So if I'm trying to find the derivative of the natural log, I can think about this as log base e of x and then just use this rule over here. This is going to be equal to 1 over x times uh, 1 over the natural log of the base. The base here is e, so 1 over the natural log of e. But again, we know that ln and e are inverses, so they're going to cancel each other out, making this 1 over 1, which is just 1. So that means that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, which is nice. That's a cool rule to know as well, as is this one here, as are these. We've got a bunch of sort of derivative rules here, sort of a grab bag of those derivative rules. In fact, I'm going to erase that one. I would say memorize this one here. And then we've got the sine and cosine ones as well. So we are sort of expanding the types of problems that we can take these derivatives on. All right, let's try uh, some, some derivatives uh, of each function. So f of x is equal to 2 sine of x plus 5 e to the x. We're combining rules here. The derivative of sine is cosine, so 2 cos x. And the derivative of e to the x is itself, so that's just plus 5 e to the x. That's our derivative. Number 2, if f of x is uh, 3 raised to the x, let's take the derivative. That's our uh, a to the x rule, so this is going to be the natural log of 3 times 3 to the x. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, and so because of that, we've got a negative 4 times negative sine. That's going to give me a positive 4 sine of x for that second one. For number 3, uh, we've got logarithms. So f prime of x in this one is going to be... 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of the base. The base is 2. And the derivative of sine is cosine, so we've got minus cosine of x. If we wanted to combine this into 1, this is 1 over x natural log of 2 minus cosine of x. That would be my f prime of x for that one. That's number 3. We got two more. Number four, find the value of the derivative at the given point. So if they're giving us, uh, they're to say we need to find the derivative and we need to plug in our x value uh, there to find our actual uh, output of the derivative, the slope of the tangent line at that point. So let's take the derivative. f prime of x is equal to 3 times the natural log of x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So this is 3 times 1 over x plus the derivative of e to the x is e to the x again. So that is going to be 3 over x plus e to the x for f prime. If we want f prime of 5, we just need to plug in uh, 5 for our x. So this is 3 over 5 plus e to the fifth power. This is a totally acceptable answer to stop at. We could, you know, potentially plug this into a calculator and then round that to three digits after the decimal place. But this is exact. This is a perfect answer. It's totally fine. I can't combine these. So I'm going to just leave them uh, as, as is. Um, if we needed to round, though, again, three digits after the decimal place is huge for this. What about number five? F prime of x is equal to... Uh, the derivative of cosine, 3 cosine of x, is going to become negative 3 sine of x. All right, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then uh, this is the same thing as 1 half times sine of x. So we've got plus 1 half the, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x. And what we can then do is uh, we can find f prime of pi. So f prime of pi is equal to what? Well, this is one of those ones where your unit circle is really helpful. So I'm going to just do a quick sketch and think about where pi is. Pi is over here, right? That's where our pi is. And that coordinate is going to be negative 1, 0. So I know the cosine is negative 1, and I know the sine is 0. 
So if we do that, this is uh, negative three times sine of pi plus one half times cosine of pi, and that's negative three times zero plus one half times negative one. So this is gonna be equal to negative one half as our derivative of f at x equals pi. That's it for today's notes. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. We had a bunch of derivative rules. Again, I would uh, focus on making some flashcards or doing something to memorize those. Those are gonna be ones you're gonna wanna know. And we've got a lot more derivative rules coming. Uh, there's all sorts of functions you're gonna wanna find the derivatives of. Please, please, please make some flashcards or, uh, or something like that to help you start memorizing those. We've got some practice. Uh, try that out, check your answers. Come to class if you've got any questions or come to office hours and then do that mastery check. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.